Hi, everyone. My name is Colin Irwin, and I'm the head of marketing here at LuxCarta. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to our webinar today. I'd also like to thank my co-presenters, Michelle Kaiser, and our special guest, Earl Laminen, Technical Director of Terrison, for joining us. Michelle, Earl, can you turn on your webcams for a second? So I'm on top. There's Michelle, and there's Earl. Uh, I am uh, performing today's call from Ottawa, Canada. Michelle is joining us from Cape Town, South Africa, and Earl is currently in Pittsburgh, PA. Guys, we will uh, now remove our webcam so that uh, so that the screen looks a little bit bigger for our attendees. We uh, we have some interesting uh, geospatial products and, and ter terrain uh, generation workflows to share with you today. We're excited to have you guys here. Uh, let's get started. Before we start the presentation, just a few housekeeping items. We expect the uh, presentation and demos to take about 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, by default, everyone is in listen mode. If you would like to ask a question, please use the box there and, and text it in. I'll be monitoring those when, when I'm not presenting. And, uh, and we will have a, a Q&A session at the end. Any questions we don't get to or any questions that seem pretty specific to an individual person and, and maybe not of much interest to the rest of the audience, I will uh, address or we will address after the fact. Um, we will also be making a video of today's webinar available if you have any colleagues that are unable to make the session today. So our agenda, we'll start with a brief introduction to Lux Carta and then we'll set up the problems we're trying to solve. I'll then introduce Bright Earth and Michelle will deliver a real-time demo of two and 3D layers being generated. From there, we'll pivot to a discussion of VBS4 terrain generation using the BI Sim world server with Bright Earth cloud data, of course. And then we'll address questions. Before I get into our Bright Earth presentation, I want to briefly introduce LuxCarta. LuxCarta is a remote sensing company that specializes in imagery analysis to generate derived geospatial products. We're experts in generating 3D models, primarily based on photogrammetric processes. Historically, our core market has been the wireless industry, uh, where our products are used for our network planning. However, we've always served other markets and in recent years have been marketing and selling into the simulation and training space. Today, a large part of our organization is busy researching and developing algorithms to automate production processes we have been manually perfecting through the years. These R&D efforts are the driving force behind Bright Earth. And just another slide here. The Lux Carta story started in, in 2012 when we merged, merged the two predecessor companies, Computer Maps and Jew Image, under the Lux Carta name. Uh, our roots and a number of our staff, however, go back to what I've listed here as the early days. Uh, a few years ago, as demand for 3D building and tree models skyrocketed on the back of 5G millimeter wave deployments, we realized we needed to pivot away from the brute force or, or manpower approaches we'd employ to support the deployments of 3G and 4G networks. The historic approaches wasn't working. The demand for 3D uh, geodata was too high. This meant a corporate focus on the application of AI to our imagery extraction and automating our production processes. To be clear, our AI processes are the sum total of our 30 years in business. We've removed as much human intervention as we can to get more consistency and speed into our production pipeline. Here we have the categories of products that we produce. Effectively, everything we create is a derived product, derived from ortho imagery, LIDAR, or other sources. The bulk of our products are derived from ortho imagery. Using this imagery, we can generate products such as 3D models or land use. As we enter the simulation and training market, I discuss the challenges faced by prospects and customers in building terrains. The comment I've heard the most, most often is, is that terrains are generated for an explicit purpose, then left to go out of date. Unless of course there's a business driver or budget to allow them to be updated. I also hear that customers have geospatial experts in-house to help with their terrain generation. This isn't really the, as much the case in, in the RF world, uh, but, but we find that our, our, our entire user base on the simulation training side is, is, is very technical. Um, 
the experts that we work with in simulation and training use whatever internally sourced data they can put their hands on, as well as OSM data. However, there are often issues with varying degrees of data accuracy, especially with the OSM, in different parts of the world. And licensing and the ability to share the trains with others is often murky. So this is the city I'm located in. This, this is an example of where the OSM uh, uh, archive is excellent. And, uh, and that's the terrain on the right that you can actually generate with, with that kind of uh, accurate street vectors and, and light post locations. I mean, you name it, the city of Ottawa is, is pretty well covered on the OSM front. The next example is a little different. The city in, in Cambodia, although it's the same size as Ottawa, um, has very little. Some street vectors, some buildings that someone used for, for uh, some purpose and, uh, and shared with the community. But, uh, but not, the, not anywhere near the level of detail that Ottawa provides. Setting up the problem a little bit further, other concerns that I hear about, uh, limited internal expertise and not enough time to generate the trains required for training. Um, if they need to outsource the train, customers say cost is often an, another issue. Uh, and a, a final challenge to, to highlight is uh, mi the missing, missing new build in cities. Uh, this sows doubt in the effectiveness of a train to be used for mission rehearsal or even in training, uh, especially if the participants know their terrain is not up to date. Finally, the, the underlying question, is there a better simple way to generate terrain? That's what we're trying to show you in this webinar. Just give you an example. We, we've we've uh, sold Singapore data a number of times through the year, and the production or the, the the new build in that city is pretty pretty amazing. So if you look at the the red circles here, let's look at the top right. Um, this is 2021 versus 2018. You can see the transition. The building in the middle has been built. Uh, 2021 looks like this. This building is being uh, you know, it was it was there in 2018, and it looks like they're demolishing it and building something else. You know, nothing very small, almost like a park in 2018, and then a building in 2021. So these are examples of new build, uh, new build that you don't really want surprising you if you're doing uh, year over year training. Okay, time for our first poll of the day, just to get a sense of uh, who's in the audience. I will start this up and launch it. If you could just answer uh, which one applies to you. I do not seem to. Okay. Some responses here. Don't be shy. Okay, so I got some results now. I'm going to give it another 15 seconds or so. Okay, I'm close the polls and share the results. And uh, I guess not surprisingly, a lot of people are using OpenStreetMap data if they can get their hands on it. A number of you have, have, have purchased commercial data and, uh, and a number of you are actually generating it yourself and or using your nation's, uh, nation's uh, um, mapping agency. Okay, interesting. So I will close that out and get back into the presentation here. So uh, next on the agenda, let's have a, a brief introduction to Bright Earth before we get into uh, Michelle's demo. Now, Bright Earth is LuxCarta's new cloud-based platform that provides users with a series of global products on demand, specifically, uh, we offer a, a global seamless mosaic, a 19 class land use at 10 meter resolution. We also generate building footprints and tree polygons from high resolution imagery, along with global elevation models at the same resolution. 
Uh, finally, we'll be offering a global population map in the future. Brighter, brighter products are produced using some of the same algorithms we use in our internal production. Uh, these products are typically derived from open source imagery such as Sentinel. However, it is possible to upload and use any high resolution imagery through our API. I should explain some of that later with the demo. I will quickly run through the next few slides. This just gives a little more detail about the, uh, the different products. I'll let you read some of the points and I'll just, I'll just highlight a few of, of interest. Uh, our global imaging mosaic at 10 meters is based on Sentinel and offers unparalleled accuracy, color balancing, and realism. It's currently updated semi-annually, but our expectation is that it'll be refreshed with greater frequency in the future. Our 19 class land use uh, is a critical input for terrain generation. It's based off the uh, Sentinel imagery mosaic that I just mentioned, which uh, critically means that our coastlines mesh seamlessly between the two products. We also produce digital terrain uh, based on open sources. It allows us to offer a complete array of products to customers that are fully uh, licensed and integrated. And then we have the pop maps. Uh, these, these products are used by our tel telco customers to prioritize their network coverage uh, and for traffic planning. Uh, our plan is to add pop maps to the Bright Earth platform uh, sometime in the first half of 2022. Perhaps the most sought after product in the Bright Earth platform is our building and tree polygon extraction. This geo-specific input can be based on our own or customer supplied imagery and provides a level of authenticity to your training terrain. The slide does not do this product justice. And a final, uh, and a final note, because I hear it all the time. Uh, one of the biggest challenges faced by customers is creating terrains based on, on various geospatial layers uh, that they have with uncertain or unknown licensing restriction. This won't be a problem with Bright Earth products. Our licenses are fully transferable and with an integrator, sorry, with an integrator license, customers are allowed to embed or are derived products in their own applications. And with that, we will get in to a Bright Earth demo. Michelle, are you with us? Yes, yes. Great. I'm gonna make you presenter. You should have a little icon there on your screen. Perfect, I see your screen. Cool. Hello, I'm Michelle, Head of Products for Lux Carta. Welcome to today's live demo showing how Bright Earth is used to extract 2D and 3D data. So this is our logging page where our account is registered for Bright Earth. I'll be logging in. First, I will demonstrate how to extract 2D trees and buildings. My first city is Manoa in Brazil. Let me just navigate. So I've used the search button to navigate to my city. For this city, I will draw a manual polygon over my area of interest. Um, so I'm on my default setting, which is the to process the 2D vectors. Um, now I can click on the start processing button. So the deep learning model is executed now and it will connect to the to any DL server that's available in our local farm. Um, the algorithm is actually running in real time now. Um, the default format for the processed raster and vector files is PNG and GeoJSON, but we also have alternative output options for these layers like spatial light, geo package shapefile, or geo tiff for a raster file. Um, the rest, the process layers can then be downloaded and opened into any GIS software or viewed online. 
So now you see it's already processed. My results button has got the trees and buildings. I'm going to switch them on. So there we have got our trees and buildings that's been processed in real time. And switch it off. For my next demonstration, I will upload a KML file and I will be going to Muscat Oman. I'm gonna just find my game. Alpha. I'll be processing some data over this AOI. You will see the area of interest is about 88 square kilometers um, or 0 .0, 0 0.8 square kilometers. Um, I'm going to change my output now to all layers, which is the full suite of Bright Earth products. I'm going to click again on the Start Processing button. So the algorithm is running on Maxa or aerial images that is fed by Mapbox. So you see it's the processing has been started. Um, Soon we will have the option to upload any custom images to be processed. Currently the process is running on a single server. We'll be moving to a background processing. We'll be moving our background processing to the cloud very soon to optimize all of this processing. And as you can see, we've got different credits allocated to different processes. Um, final pricing for the credits should also be available soon. Now, how does this compare to others out there? Luxcart has been, has have more than 20 decades of experiencing modeling the world. Production is constantly feeding the database with new or updated models all over the, the world where production is currently in process. As you can see, our progress bar here at the bottom, the final raster layer, which is a DTM that's busy processing here. The final step is to assign heights to the polygons. And we're almost done. We are 95%. Great. There's my four layers processed. We've got a DTM. got 3D buildings, I've got trees, and I've got a land use layer with these. This is the 19 class menu that we are extracting automatically. Michelle, it's, it's pretty small on the screen. Can you just read those out? Because I know our, our, uh, our category numbers large compared to some others out there okay so we've got sea inland water wetland barren low vegetation sparse forest forest village residential with trees residential with few trees dense residential urban dense urban high buildings building blocks commercial industrial airport open and urban roads and bridges so now I'm gonna switch on the trees and buildings again. And I can flip my whole view in 3D now. You can see buildings, trees, it's got heights. And you can actually see in this view now, we've got a nice mountain in the background. almost like a digital twin <laughs> and then the resolution again michelle of this so this 
Currently, we're saving the raster land use layer out at 50 centimeters, 50 centimeter resolution. Okay, let me just go back north up on this view. So there's our land use layer. And then obviously the trees and the buildings doesn't have any um, resolution assigned to it because it's vectors and not a raster format. And you can actually see that the trees and the buildings is matching the land use layer quite well. And, and again, Michelle, some of the, I mean, the straight edges and the, of our buildings, I mean, I've, I've seen a number of buildings through the years and, and some of the things that we do, we manually did and now we automatically do. Do you just want to explain yeah. some of that? So we, we've come up with our own proprietary tools to actually generate 90 degree um, angles and to do automatic snapping for our buildings. Um, our trees, all of this we have on the production side, we've had a project that had to be finished within a very short time, short time. And most of this back end um, propriety tools that we've developed is based for the production team to actually speed up production that we can deliver faster. And because we in the business for such a long time, we've got a variety of different areas in the world that we can actually feed into our database for training areas for different cities. I think this is it now for the 2D and 3D building extraction. Lastly, I just wanna show you we have, oh, just on this point, um, I've just kept these AOIs quite small to just do the whole quick process. If somebody, Colin, can organize for um, bigger or true longer um, demos. Lastly, I just want to show our global 10 meter land use layer that's in here. Um, this Sentinel Mosaic is connected via WMS. And this mosaic, we will start updating um, annually quite soon. So this is the 10 meter. We'll see, you can't see that much detail as a high res image, but. You know, where are you there? What, what city is that? I uh, think I'm in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, somewhere in. No, 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 sorry. No, no, I am. There's Dubai. No, there we are. That's it from me. Okay, to, to, to just to reiterate one point Michelle made. Um, so, so we're we're uh, getting our imagery here through through Mapbox at this point, and it, it, but we are with the API has been developed to support customer uh, imagery as well. So uh, you know, I envision that upload a AOI, there'll be an upload uh, your imagery uh, type icon in the in the left there somewhere, and. Uh, and then you can take advantage of your own investment in imagery to, to derive products from it as well. Okay, thank you for that, Michelle. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take back the controls here. Great. And it is time for poll number two. Getting ready for uh, Earl to do his presentation. Just to I'm just gonna launch this here. says it's launched there we are so trying to get an understanding of people's uh, awareness of generating terrains for for either vbs3 or 4. 
And Earl, I will let you uh, comment on the results on this one. Okay. Just trying to see. So we got 25 minutes or 25 seconds in. We'll let a few more people vote. The good thing, Earl, is that there's some power users on here. <laughs> I recognize a few. <laughs> Okay, we'll leave it for another couple seconds here. And we are gonna close this and share the results. Well, there you have it, Earl, did you see that? Yep, great, and it looks like we're more heavily weighted towards uh, people that do uh, or have built VBS3 and VBS4 terrains, uh, that's great. Um, I'm sure we're gonna show you some, some interesting stuff. Um, and uh, for those that aren't uh, don't have experience or maybe don't understand that much about um, uh, simulation terrain, uh, I have a little bit of an introduction in my in my slides to kind of give you some context for what we're doing. Okay, and with that, uh, Earl, I'm going to transfer the presentation over to you and let you start your demo. All right, let's make sure this is. You can see the presentation now. Uh, yeah, there it is. All right. Okay, yeah. uh, so to start, uh, my name is Earl Lominen. I am the technical director here at Terrasim. Um, and uh, our parent company is Bohemia Interactive Simulations, or BI Sim. Uh, and they're, we are primarily a software developer that builds uh, virtual training software. Um, VBS3 is what we're probably most known for right now. Um, it's being used very widely across the world uh, for. Um, sort of tactical training. Um, you can see it in the image being used here for, for training military personnel. Um, it's used in a lot of different ways, but the sort of classroom networked lab for tactical training is, is the most common use case right now. Um, and we've just released uh, the next generation of the VBS product line, uh, which is VBS4, and the associated products of VBS Blue IG, which is an image generator that goes along with uh, the VBS4, and the VBS World Server, uh, which can stream terrain data to those, to those new products. Um, so as for TerraSim ourselves, we're a BISIM company. We're based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we develop geospatial software for virtual terrain generation. Um, we're most known for TerraTools. That's our desktop software for building, um, building terrain for training and simulation. And of course, we do support VBS3 and VBS4, but um, the, the goal of TerraTools is actually to support as many different formats as we can to give you one tool to have one process, one pipeline, and as many outputs as you require for your your training needs. So we support uh, over a dozen other simulation formats um, outside of the uh, the BI sim uh, uh, runtimes. Um, so these are the, the products we'll be focusing on today, and I'll just give a little bit of context for these. Um, these are kind of what we'll feature in the in the demonstration we're gonna, going to give. So VBS4, as I mentioned, um, is the, the latest product in the VBS line. It's an easy to, easy to use, whole earth virtual and constructive simulation. Um, what's really different about VBS4 compared to VBS3 is we now have the entire planet represented uh, with a base level of detail. So anywhere you go in the world, you'll find, uh, you know, approximately correct waterways, uh, elevation data, um, vegetation, uh, and buildings and roads with the limitations we just discussed earlier with regards to how complete some of those open data sources can be in, in some parts of the world. Um, and I also wanted to point out there's a few other things that come along with VBS4. So the VBS Geo Editing Mode is a tool within VBS4. There's a whole range of different editing or uh, modes and tools within VBS4. VBS Geo is one of those, um, and its uh, its purpose is for um, people to edit terrain in 3D, uh, having sort of direct control over the placement of buildings and trees and surfaces. Uh, you can edit roads and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not going to feature in this demo, but it's just worth noting it's kind of another component of our of our terrain editing suite. Um, and uh, I just wanted to mention that so you can see where it where it fits in the in the, the scheme of things here. And the VBS World Server, um, which I've mentioned already, it's actually the, in the center here. That is also part of the VBS4 license when you buy VBS4. And and what it does is it can stream terrain data to VBS4 clients that are connected or to VBS Blue IG uh, image generator clients. Um, and last, we have TerraTools. As I mentioned, that's our desktop software for um, generating virtual terrain for a whole range of simulation runtimes. Um, and what we're going to be doing in this demonstration um, is kind of taking a step ab above this, sort of gluing these different parts together. So um, 
what we're going to be actually talking about is more generally our world server technology. So this is less of a product and more of a framework and a set of COTS components. So we've talked about the COTS or commercial off-the-shelf components, those, those products uh, with the icons below. Um, but we're going to be talking more about how we can build customized solutions that um, integrate these products into a workflow that can be automated. Um, so this is kind of, this is a little bit new for us. Um, we've been investing in this technology for a number of years, both internal investments as well as um, funding from clients like the U.S. Army and their One World Terrain program where we've been helping prototype technology. Um, parts of our world server technology are involved in that uh, U.S. Army uh, new, new training system uh, called One World Terrain. And uh, really the focus is on automation and simplification. Uh, and that's what we're actually gonna demonstrate today. So it's, this can scale uh, up to very large scale sort of enterprise level solutions if we need it to, as, as uh, is happening with the US Army, but it can also handle very small scale things. So it's, um, this is, I guess the, the point I'm trying to get across is this is less of a product off the shelf and more of a, a discussion with uh, users to see what they actually need and design a, a specific uh, you know, solution that, that fits your needs. So we're actually going to demonstrate a uh, relatively simple but really uh, compelling um, integration that we've done with Lex Carta. So this is kind of the diagram or the layout to what we're doing. Um, on the left, you can see the orange boxes. Those are the user interactions. Uh, and everything to the right is all automated uh, kind of server to server interactions. So starting at the top uh, left orange box, that's the web client or just a standard web browser connecting to our uh, world server. And you'll see when you connect, you'll see a, a view of the planet. You'll be able to zoom in and select an area of the world that you want to have built. That area that you select will then be passed off to the Bright Earth server automatically. And Lux Carta's Bright Earth server will then perform the extraction that Michelle just demonstrated. Uh, we'll also get that land use and land class data, and then we'll fill in. So we're using some high-res imagery that's been uh, um, collected for this area that we're interested in, but the area around it will be filled in with that lower resolution 10 meter data, and we'll be able to show the benefits of doing that, that type of uh, blended solution. So when that stuff is ready from our automated request to Bright Earth, um, the servers talk to each other, they send the data back when it's ready, we collect it back on the world server, and then we hand it off to a fully automated TerraTools process. Uh, and this is really interesting for us. Um, one of the things that uh, um, we do get feedback on is TerraTools can be a little bit complicated. Um, it is a, is a power user, a tool for power users. Um, and, and what's, I think, interesting about this is we're able to pre-configure a TerraTools graph to understand and expect Bright Earth data, and then completely automatically build uh, detailed VBS4 terrain uh, and not only that, but once the TerraTools process is finished on the server, it hands it off to the VBS Blue data pipeline, which is the sort of the terrain engine within VBS4. Uh, and that can automatically stream the terrain data to a connected VBS4 client. So coming all the way back to the left, um, the user basically uses a web interface to request an area to be built. Uh, they wait a little while and then um, automatically everything happens. And at the end, a VBS4 client that has been connected to the world server can see that terrain data dropping in and, and actually appearing in front of them. And that's what we're gonna demonstrate today. So just to give a bit of context for the, the region that we're actually focused on, um, the, the city of Palma in Mozambique, uh, it was the site of an attack by Islamic State uh, earlier this year in March. Um, it's also next to a major natural gas development uh, and that's resulted in some considerable changes to the terrain. So there's many new roads, uh, hundreds or maybe thousands of new buildings. Um, there's a brand new airfield that didn't exist a few years ago. Um, excuse me, and there's um, you know associated land cover changes. Um, and if you look at these areas on Google Earth or uh, especially OpenStreetMap, um, they just don't reflect the level of detail and, and the changes that have happened over the past few years. So that's where having some you know responsive, um, automated like server-based processing like LexCarta is demonstrating really lets us get. Um, Starting from, from recent imagery, we can sort of derive all of these um, building footprints and trees that really reflect what's on the ground and build that very quickly into VBS4. So we start to get closer to an idea of being able to do um, uh, you know, very quick mission rehearsal um, or just keeping a site updated because um, the process that we're going to be showing is, is automated. So the idea is you could potentially change the imagery at some point in the future as you collect new imagery uh, and have all those changes reflected. Um, so just to take a, a quick look at the sort of changes we're talking about. So this is 2018, and if you um, if you look in the top center, that's the the city or the town of Palma. 
Um, and to the right, this sort of triangular peninsula is the natural gas development area. And you'll see how rapidly it changes as I move uh, through the years. So in 2019, uh, you can see the beginning of uh, the residential kind of housing area, uh, the runway starting to be built, um, and there's a road or a, or a pipeline being uh, constructed there. Uh, in 2020, the uh, runway is further developed. Uh, there's additional uh, industrial development, and uh, it's starting to reach out towards what will become the new port for the for shipping uh, natural gas. And finally, this is I think imagery from May 2021. Uh, not too long ago, the airfield is actually complete. There's a working runway there now, um, and the port facility is starting to be constructed. Um, so from here, I'm actually going to jump uh, jump into the um, the live demo section. So uh, just bear with me while I get things set up. All right, so now we're going to move over to the live demo portion. Um, I'm going to close this presentation or move over to my uh, tab where I'm going to connect to the web server on our on our world server setup. Uh, this is going to give me a view of the planet. I'll be able to uh, zoom in and narrow down the area that I want to request, uh, which again is Palma in Mozambique. Uh, and you can see it here. Um, this is the area where all the development is. Interesting to note that just in the cesium base globe, that, that imagery isn't updated yet. Uh, so you can't uh, see all those changes that have happened here. Um, we're going to zoom right into this, uh, this area here. Uh, and the area that I have on screen is what's going to be handled as the bounding box for the, the request for the terrain that we want to have built. Uh, and we'll use this clipping tool we've added in and select a process called uh, Lexcarta All Layers. And I'm going to hit confirm, and that's going to kick off this automated process that's going to go all the way through these various uh, server stages, uh, data handling, extraction on the Luxcarta side, and end up with a VBS4 terrain streaming back to my client. This is early days for us. This is a prototype. We don't have a whole lot of user interface built around this yet. So uh, when I hit confirm, it just disappears, uh, and I have to go into the um, uh, inspection mode to look at the console right now just to show you what's happening. Eventually, this will be on-screen user interface, of course. You can see various layers being processed, DTM, clutter, uh, trees, buildings, etc. That's the data that's being generated on the Luxcarta Bright Earth server based on our request. We're getting those updates back from the server, and when it's all ready, we download it. Okay, so this is the data that's been loaded in. I can take a better look at this here. Um, and what's interesting is I can just increase the opacity so it's easier to see. Uh, you can see vegetation has been detected really nicely, um, building footprints as well. Um, and then finally, we actually have the high-res imagery that was used for the extraction uh, as, a, as a clipped uh, raster here that's been loaded in. Um, and you can see, compared to the base terrain, I'm not sure how old that, that uh, base imagery is from the, the viewer in the background, uh, but it's considerably outdated in terms of uh, the kinds of changes that have happened since then. Um, so just in interesting to note how much the town itself has also changed in addition to those, those major changes we've seen at the uh, uh, natural gas development. So in the background, while we've been looking at this, the same data has been passed off to a, a TerraTools process that's been running in the background. As it completes, it's handing off that resulting VBS4 terrain layer set over to the, um, the VBS World Server component or the VBS Blue data pipeline, which is then providing a, a streaming connection to the VBS4 client. Uh, and all of that happens automatically. I can go over to the VBS4 client now and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are now in VBS4, uh, and I'm in the editor mode, the mission editor mode of, of VBS4. Um, and we are over in Mozambique. So I'm going to come down and take a look at that um, little bit of terrain that we've just, just generated. So you can see it sitting here um, over top of the base data. So the base data provides us with... Uh, a good starting point for building terrain. We have all the coastlines, uh, all the landforms represented, uh, and in general, the uh, location of forests and versus plains and other kind, kinds of uh, general surfaces like that. So it's a good starting point to build terrain. And you can see here, uh, our little patch of uh, generated terrain is sitting on top of, uh, of the base data. All right, so what we can start to see here are the details uh, in the building. So starting from those building footprints provided by Luxcarta, we were able to um, extrude those into um, VBS buildings that have collisions, destruct states, um, <clears throat> and then we've uh, randomly assigned some 
some textures and details to them. Uh, so, you know, we can follow some rules, like in this case for the smaller buildings tend to be towards the, the thatch roof uh, style and, and um, rusty metal uh, rooftops, while the larger buildings tend to be uh, newer looking or having the, um, the blue painted uh, roof panels. Uh, we also have the, the 50 centimeter resolution imagery in here uh, underneath that as the, the terrain surface. Uh, and we also have some additional data such as the uh, um, the paved road from uh, open street maps that we brought in. Uh, and along there, it's a little bit hard to see now, we'll get closer, there are some scattered um, uh, utility poles at, at intervals. Um, yeah, so for, for basically no direct effort, uh, this is a pretty impressive terrain that we can generate. Uh, we have a uh, pretty high density of buildings, a uh, good representation of what's really there on the ground. Uh, and, you know, one of the nice features of VBS4, of course, is the detailed vegetation. So um, this stuff is all pre-configured. It, it exists in VBS4. Um, this is part of the biome for this African region. And all we've had to do is take the Lux Carta data where they say there should be forest, we map it to the forest surface type in VBS4. When we place it in Terra Tools, we automatically get these forests and shrubs and other types of vegetation just appearing where they should. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, that gets us to a very usable terrain very quickly. We can already do training on this terrain. Um, and of course, if we want to go further and make even more improvements, uh, we are uh, more than able to do that as well. Um, so that's the kind of... Uh, live demo sort of connection where the, that, from that simple web interface, we're doing a, requ a request that goes off to the Lux Carta servers uh, and generates the um, high resolution data that we need to complete the terrain. Um, that data comes back to us on our world server, automatically flows through a prepared TerraTools graph uh, and generates this terrain, which then goes on to the, uh, the VBS4 terrain server, which streams across to the client. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually unload this data one of the nice things about VBS4 is the ability to do that um, kind of live changes to the terrain on a layer by layer basis. So I'm going to remove those layers that we've just generated. You can see them disappearing. And what I'm going to do is show the uh, full scale terrain that we built uh, for this region, which um, takes a little bit longer than we can show in a webinar, but it doesn't take that long. It's a number of hours, uh, not days. Um, we're just uh, not practical to show the full process happening uh, during the webinar. Um, and what I'm gonna do is bring it in layer by layer so that you can see the kind of, yeah, I guess the, the makeup of a, of a terrain layer for VBS4. And we're gonna start with the high res surface data. Okay, so that's the first layer that comes in, and you can see um, the uh, the natural gas development area um, clearly has all of the uh, you know the roads and some of the major um, patches of dirt where construction is happening is, is very clearly laid out here. Um, and I think one of the things that's in interesting to show at this point is just um, how detailed this terrain is just by using the surface mask. Um, so this can already be a fully useful terrain. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about buildings in a second; those aren't added yet. Um, but before we bring in the imagery, um, you know, just to show how good the vegetation and, and grass coverage is here. Um, again, this is kind of the inherent kind of background data that exists in VBS4, and all we're doing is giving some instructions on where, where to place those objects for us. Um, this can be entirely suitable for training as it is. Um, we will bring in the imagery next just to show how that looks. Um, but you know, one of the considerations with using lots of high-res imagery is just um, you know data storage, um, streaming requirements, um, uh, and if you're delivering this to someone, just you know the size of downloads and things like that. So um, I guess the point is we're not making decisions about which one you should use. You have the option to use both. Uh, there isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, it's really up to your you and your use case uh, to choose which one works best for you. So we'll continue loading data here. Now we'll get to the high-res imagery. takes a minute, it's about two gigabytes for 50 centimeter imagery over this area of, uh, I think it's roughly 20 by 20 kilometers. Uh, and it's irregular as well. Again, this is something that wasn't possible in VBS4, is, uh, sorry, in VBS3 and is much easier in VBS4 just to have um, irregular and you know, not necessarily uh, coincident data layers. So we can just bring in whatever we happen to have uh, and make the best use of it in our, in our simulation. 
Okay, so now we have the imagery. We can clearly see the development now. Um, the town is more obvious up here in the, in the north. We can see the um, built-up area. And so the other thing that's really nice about the LexCarta data service is the ability to not just use your high-res imagery, but to patch in kind of the surrounding areas with um, their 10-meter data products. So that's the um, same surface data, the land use or land classification data, uh, and imagery. So I'll bring those two layers in now. First, the surface. So this is a 10 meter resolution uh, land use land class data layer that's been configured and mapped to the VBS4 rules. So you can see that coming in and um, making it clear where the roads and farms are within the forest. And we can do the same thing with imagery. Okay, so that now fills in very nicely and it's no longer easy to see where the uh, the edge of the imagery is. That gives us a nice, uh, you know, area of interest play box. Um, what I'll do now is come into this uh, residential development here that's part of the um, the uh, natural gas uh, development area. And you can see here what's interesting, I guess, is it's a very different type of construction from what we just saw in Palma. So this has uh, all new buildings. They all have the same rooftop colors, uh, minus a few that are green, but in general, uh, everything's red. Uh, we don't have that kind of randomization uh, as we did uh, previously. So we can actually account for that um, by going in and preparing the graph that in this ge geographic region, there is a certain type of, uh, of uh, rule set that we want to use that's different from the other one. Later on, as LuxCarta mentioned, they're going to be providing actual uh, uh, rooftop colors, which we will be happy to make use of when it's there. When it's not there, we have other techniques we can use. So that's what I'm about to show now, is bringing in all of the... Um, the object data that we produced. So you can see those come in and we now have 3D buildings with the correct roof colors here, uh, giving us a very accurate depiction of what this area looks like. Um, so suddenly you can start to use it for uh, you know, planning, security. Um, and of course, this is only, this imagery is only a few months old. So this is a really high detail representation of what, what's really on the ground here. And one more thing before we move on, I do want to just address the uh, the runway here. Uh, it is a nice looking runway from the from the imagery at this distance. If you're just flying past it or looking at it from a distance, this may be fine. Um, but what I think is interesting is the um, you know the, the detail kind of starts to degrade as you get really close. 50 centimeter imagery just doesn't hold up all that well um, at ground level. If you're having to do if you're planning to do training, you know, based on um, uh, operations at the runway, you, you're going to need more detail. And we've started to develop a solution for that within TerraTools. So this is separate from the automated process that we've been showing um, with the LuxCarta connection. So this is kind of a secondary process that we've done just within TerraTools. Um, but I think it's interesting to show how we can blend the technique. So we can build the base terrain with uh, these processes, automated processes that we're showing. If there's something kind of special or different about the terrain, of course, we can always come in and make additional improvements to it. So in this case, we're going to drop in these um, these runway changes. And what you should see happen is, um, so the runway is cleared and we get this uh, kind of uh, much more high resolution representation of the airfield. It's a little different. I did build it quite quickly. Uh, this took under under an hour to build and have uh, in VBS4, uh, but you can see it really holds up to you know a level of detail. If you had to do uh, operations based on the on the runway itself uh, for any kind of flight training, or just uh, you know airport security that sort of thing, um, you know we now have that cap capability within TerraTools to make that that fast and easy. Okay, um, so we'll leave this area aside now, and we're going to head back to the town of Palma. And we'll just look at the coverage that we have here now. So so previously we just had that small area, just kind of this uh, rectangular region uh, in the center of the screen. We now have the rest of the town built out uh, in full detail. And uh, I believe the number of buildings that were provided by Lux Carta for this area was uh, just over 22,000. So 22,000 buildings are represented here. Um, everything that they've detected, we've, we've generated a shape for. Uh, and you can see it all here uh, in the town. So really just providing a very high resolution, high detail um, terrain that's perfectly ready for, for training. Um, just to take another look here, we're just gonna dive into one of these areas of vegetation and just show the kind of detail that you get on the ground here for, for almost no effort, really. So very high detail res uh, resolution vegetation, 
um, you know, respecting the surface classification that we had from Lex Carta. So we have bushes where they should be, uh, forests where they should be, grasses where, where that should be, uh, and you get this really nice looking uh, bit of terrain. Okay, um, one more thing to show, just to uh, kind of complete the demo here. Uh, we'll just look at the town over here, and what we're going to do is change the time of day. And we're going to move it to uh, evening. And what you'll see is we've added some scattered uh, street lights, uh, not very many. Uh, there's not nearly as many street lights here as there are uh, utility poles. So every so often on a utility pole, we've just attached a light for a very quick demonstration here. And you can see what's actually happening. It starts off quite dark, um, but there's sort of a realistic approximation of eye adaptation. So um, I changed the time really quickly, but the, uh, the camera is sort of catching up to the, the fact that I just changed the time. And you can see uh, the town is actually lit up by street lights. And uh, we can go down at ground level here and see what that looks like. So again, kind of the full day and night cycle can look very, very realistic in VBS4. It's actually really pretty, I think. And uh, again, that all that all was built uh, part of the TerraTools graph that we ran. So there's nothing special added on. That was part of the uh, the initial um, generation rules that existed on that that TerraTools graph that um, that was automatically used here. Okay, um, that's actually, I think, the end of the demo. Um, I'm gonna hand things back to Colin now. Let me just um, head back to my presentation. And uh, yeah, if you need to contact me for anything, that's my email address, earl.lamanen at terrasim.com. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks, back to you, Colin. Thank you, Earl, for that demo. It's amazing to see our bright earth tree polygons, buildings, and other layers get converted into a VBS for terrain uh, using the BI Sim World Server Tech and Terra Tools. Heading back to our agenda, we have reached the conclusion of today's webinar. I'll just uh, have a few final thoughts here. Uh, as you can tell, we're very excited about Bright Earth here at Lux Carta. We see the market for on demand geospatial data growing dramatically in the years ahead with its ease of use, accuracy, and flexible licensing. Uh, we believe the Bright Earth range of globally available products will meet the needs of the simulation and training community going forward. I hope you've enjoyed our webinar today. Uh, Bright Earth and VBS4 together offer tremendous flexibility in terrain generation. Uh, together, we see them offering a cost-effective and simplified way to create ready-to-use terrains. An easier way to maintain terrains as digital twins for up-to-date, repeatable training. Consistent quality data with known licensing for anywhere in the world with Bright Earth. The ability to unlock your investment in your own imagery uh, to generate derived products, as well as access to powerful generation, uh, sorry, terrain generation utilities without needing to be a power user. Uh, we'd be interested to have further discussions with anyone uh, on today's webinar or watching the video that we're making of this. Uh, and we can hopefully tailor the products uh, that we can deliver to meet your specific needs. If anyone needs to contact myself or Michelle, our contact details are here. Uh, at this point, I will just say a final thank you to everyone, my, to my co-presenters and to all the attendees for uh, joining us today. Thanks again.